joining us on night coming to you from the city so nigeria my name is best orator we'll begin now with the news highlights and thereafter we quickly will be letting you know what will happen on our news bulletin tonight welcome on board we, when we are intent collecting the bike from him he dragged with us are you eating with what i'm eating with stone yeah, you know, I didn't, I wasn't fed on Cerillac. I was fed on a good, a good, a good uh, concoction. Um, these six projects are not the only projects we're expecting to be having over to us in May. We believe that after the public order of Bondi, uh, we're meeting with all the contractors. We share a common mission of developing the capacities of Nigerian professionals, creating a world-class workforce, and harnessing the power of petroleum technology. Resurrection. So we have to carry our children to this place to make sure they observe some things. Former President of Nigeria, Chief Olusha Gwambasonjo, has called on Nigerian leaders to be selfless as leadership is an opportunity to serve the nation and its people. Ambassador made a call during a courtesy visit to Governor Godwin Obaseki in Government House, Edo State, Nigeria. The report. The former president of Nigeria said that the present situation of Nigeria is unfortunately hard and noted that bad situation can become good and it is just a matter of time. He said those in position of authority should not focus on themselves alone but bath others, not their tomorrow alone but everyone's tomorrow and not the individual's generation but everyone's generation including the generation coming and that is what sustainable development is all about. Obasa just said those who have the opportunity should not only think about today, but tomorrow and the coming generation. The situation is hard, unfortunately so. But there's no bad situation that will not be good. The question is when and how. So uh, we should be saying to those who have the opportunity now because it's an opportunity for you to have to run the affairs of your country look after your people it's an opportunity that it should not be me it should be we it should not be mine it should be ours on the development of stride of Governor Gordon Obaseki in the last seven and a half years, Olusegun Obasanjo just said he has learned a lot and better educated now about things in the state, both recent and immediate future. On the secret of his good health and agility, the former president said the secret is the grace of God coupled with diet, rest, exercise, medicals, social interaction and contentment. Uh, of course, like our people, we say Gani Ya Fiji meaning meaning uh, seeing is believing. And so uh, when you are in a place you learn a lot more by your visit than just hearing uh, and that's uh, what uh, has happened to me. Well really uh, but when I want to joke about it, I would say that, uh, yeah, you know, I didn't, I wasn't fed on Cerillac. I was fed on a good, a good, a good uh, concoction. So <clears throat> that is still in the body. A passenger who was in Benin City to pay diary of his kid cousin to a Benin girl said it was necessary to first visit the governor and security officers of the state. Best Orator reporting for BTV News. And now to some security matters. The Understate Police Command on Sunday said it has arrested a 39-year-old man, Dolakbo Babalola, 
for allegedly killing one of Bayemi Olale Kong, who is 34, after stealing his motorcycle. The police said the suspect killed the victim in Okeigotan in Ileoloji, Okeigbo local government area of the state on March 15, 2024, after which he allegedly took away the victim's motorcycle. BTV News told Sintolu Waloju has details of this report. Speaking on the incident, the state's commissioner of police, Abayomi Oladipo, said that the victim, who was a commercial motorcycle rider, was lured by the suspect and one other who is currently at large under the pretense of patronizing him from Ondo town to a farm in Okeigo town. Oladipo also stated that his men were able to arrest the suspect after the motorcycle owner reported at the police station that the deceased and his motorcycle were missing. He said on March 25th, 2024, a complainant reported at police headquarters that the motorcycle he gave a rider was not seen since March 15, 2024, and every effort to trace the rider proved futile. Consequent upon the report, police moved into action, and through technical intelligence, the suspect was arrested. Upon interrogation of the suspect, he confessed to how the rider, who incidentally happened to be his friend, was engaged from Undo town to take him and one other who is currently at large to a farm area in Oki. He said on getting to a particular point, they came down from the bike under the pretense that they want to inspect their farm. The other suspect now at large gripped the Okada rider at the back, and the suspect that police apprehended hit him with a stone on the head and consistently used the wood to hit his head. The CP stated that thereafter they dragged the already dead body into the bush, threw him into a pit and used leaf to cover him and left him there. Having been interrogated, it led operatives to this particular location where the dead body of the deceased was found. And the suspects that we apprehended hit him with stone on the head and consistently used wood to batter his head. Thereafter, they dragged the already dead body into the bush, throw him into a pit stench that is oozing out from this location. They ought to have uh, taken necessary steps by informing the police in this area of what they have The suspect, Babalola, when asked the reason for killing his friend after stealing his motorcycle, said he could not even explain the reason, blaming the devil. Babalola revealed that he started stealing motorcycles since 2021 and had stolen over 15 motorcycles, which he sold to a buyer in Ibado, the Oyo state capital. He, however, said that this was the first time he would kill his victim and could not explain the reason why. My close friend. He's a close friend of mine. Okay. Truly, his bike is not the first bike I've ever seen. So we, when we are intent collecting the bike from him, he dragged with us. Are you eating with what? I'm eating with stone. Stone, okay. <coughs> and do you know his family at all? I know, I know his mom and his younger brother. Okay. So how do you okay. feel on seeing the mom and the younger part doing this? Oh. You were looking for him and how do you <laughs> Can't explain, sir. The suspect said he cannot count the number of bikes he has stolen specifically, but more than 15, and that the person that used to buy the bike is at Ibado. Tosin to Luwaloju, reporting for BTV News. Still in the height of excitement that comes with the Easter festive season, parents, children, teenagers, and group. On Monday, gathered to celebrate the Eastern Monday at the Ogba Zoological Garden and Nature Park in Benin City. BTV News Faithful Okpokam reports. It was a thrilling sight as joy-filled children, teenagers, and equally excited parents were seen around the Ogba Zoo to enjoy the beauty of nature and wildlife in celebration of the Easter season. Amidst the party being held by different groups, individuals who clustered in groups having refreshments and enjoying the bliss the festive season has called for. Several parents who spoke to the BTV News crew communicated their joy bringing their children to the recreational center, adding that it has created an opportunity 
for shared memories, endearment, as well as learning and teaching, and also called on the government to build more recreational facilities that can be visited on different occasions. Very nice experience because we brought our children from the church here. We had a nice time, we studied the world, we prayed, we still went around, took them around to see nature, animal, different types of animals, and they, they were all excited and they are happy and they wish they can, they can stay longer. Okay. Uh, this is a, it's a fun, enjoying area. And for the fact that uh, historically, this has been, even while I was still very much young, I do hear of this of Basel, of Basel, of Basel. Only on the course of uh, government work, I came down to Benin. I had children and I felt, ever since I have been coming to this red place, it's always a recurrent developing uh, area. And we are here to catch up fun, see different animals, and make my children feel happy. We pay for Christ Resurrection. So we have to carry our children to this place to make sure they observe some things. And uh, this is what we're supposed to be doing in this country. But establish something here that people will come, not even only Christmas or Easter or any time they... Uh -huh. so, they, they should do more things to make sure everywhere is lovely. Teenagers also share their ecstasy, having to experience wildlife together with families and friends. Yeah, the time that we were praying here, connecting with the Lord, we also connected with wildlife, got to see many animals, I got to move around this big, so I didn't even know that the zoo was this big. So in conclusion, I just enjoyed my Easter Monday. To be here, to experience everything is nice. The place is cool, the animals, everything, yes, everything is wonderful. It's fun and nice, at least my time that I've spent here, it's been fun. Business owners were not left out as the presence of multitudes helped boost their sales. We enjoy selling our books. Here yeah, was a uh, school, people buy, parents buy books, at least you see children, uh, parents that care for their children's education. So they yeah, have one or two textbooks, parents that read too. The federal government declared Friday, 28th March, and Monday, 1st of April, 2024, public holidays to commemorate Easter celebration. Faithful Okpokam, reporting for BTV News. Public and some private sectors have remained closed following the public holiday declared by the federal government for Christians to celebrate Easter Monday. That Monday public holiday gives workers an opportunity to unwind and engage in various activities outside their regular routine. BTV News said Okriaifo has the rest of the report. With companies, banks and government establishment closed because of the public holiday, many Nigerians use the holiday to relax and bond with families. There were few vehicular movements and pedestrians on the streets as most workers were indoors enjoying a well-deserved break from their official duties. The public holiday served as moments of reflection, celebration and unity among Nigerians from diverse backgrounds. The closure of banks as a result of the public holiday affected almost all banking services. As a lot of Nigerians said, they had to rely on point of say POS and automated teller machines as an alternative to carry out their transaction. Me and my family, we are alive for today. I am very happy. That is my enjoyment of Christmas this year. Public holiday mean it's all to have a rest. And not only that, maybe some of us who are Christians to have a reflection of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I think those are the major things. Anything out of that, what other achievement? You don't need to go to work at that time. You, now you are not going to work. How will you, will you get money? No. But some persons are self-employed like I am. Sober reflection, where we all come together to know the purpose of Easter, how Christ died for us on the cross of Calvary, and he said it is finished. So many people just see it as maybe... Uh, a time of uh, enjoyment, spending your time out, taking your families out. It's more than that. The best time to spend your Easter is in the house of God. To know the purpose why Christ comes to die for you as a Christian. Easter is all about taking a new decision. 
uh, because Jesus died and he resurrected. He's uh, taking a new decision, a new glory, and I believe that uh, the resurrection of Jesus will bring a new glory to this country, Nigeria. And the resurrection of Jesus will cause a lot of turnaround for this country called Nigeria. Bank, the stress we are going to go through, you better just go to POS and withdraw your money and get out of the place. Like today, I will drop money. I don't even stress for it. I don't bother for it. The Easter public holiday holds immense importance for many Nigerians. As some said, it gives them the chance to reflect on the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ that is believed to bring about salvation to mankind, adding that it is a time for Nigerians to renew their hope for a better Nigeria. The Easter public holiday in Nigeria serves as a time of religious observance, family bonding, festive celebrations, travel and rest. Set Obiaifu reporting for BTV News. The Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Mr. Yeson Wike, has expressed joy that President Bola Tinubu's promise to transform Abuja is turning out successful. Wike stated this in Abuja after inspecting six ongoing projects across the territory. BTV News Tosin in Tulu Aloju has details of the report. The project site inspected by the FCT minister includes the Southern Parkway from Christian Center to Ring Road 1, being handled by Cetra Cole and Vice President's residence, being handled by Julius Berger. Other projects visited were B6 and B12, Independence Avenue, also handled by Julius Berger. We engineering infrastructure being handled by Arab contractors and M20 Northern Parkway to Arthur Northern Expressway in Jai District being handled by Gimor. The minister also inspected the outer southern expressway from Villa Roundabout to Ring Road 1 being handled by CGC. We can express joy at the progress of the work and thank the God that the renewed hope agenda is working. He said Nigerians can see that Mr. President has done well and the problem he has made to transform Abuja is turning out successful and there is no need to doubt. Um, these six projects are not the only projects we are expecting to be handed over to us in May. We believe that after the public order of Monday, uh, we are meeting with all the contractors on Tuesday to know how ready and then on Wednesday we are also going to see some sites at Guzapi and other areas to see the level of uh, preparedness. So for us, we're happy with what we've seen, and we thank God that, like I've said before, the Renewed Hope agenda is working. Uh, Nigerians can see that uh, the president has done well. The promises he has made to transform Abuja is coming out uh, successfully. The minister identified non-fulfillment of promises by politicians as a, major, as a major problem, adding that such actions make the electorate lose confidence. He, however, said that when politicians make promises and fulfill them, it gives people hope and makes them happy. He commended Tinubu for the support, adding that the contractors have attested to the fact that funding was not a problem. The minister said the expansion tour took them to weird district engineering infrastructure, being handled by Arab contractors, adding that they were 95% ready and they made a commitment that it would soon be handed over. Then to N20 Northern Parkway to Southern Northern Expressway in Jai District, which is being done by Gimor, we can said that the essence of going to project sites was to see whether the contractors were delivering the project according to design and according to contract terms. He reiterated his promise that no project would be abandoned, adding that no project would be awarded without the money to fund it. I promised before that we would not allow projects to be abandoned. Where we don't have funds, we don't need to award projects. It doesn't matter the pressure that may come. What is important is that people who are working for you, you have to pay them. So we're very happy what was said. The minister disclosed that he would meet all the contractors on Tuesday to finalize the readiness to complete ongoing projects. He added that he would continue the project inspection on Wednesday to see the level of preparation for handing over of the project in May. Tosin to Lua Lucho, reporting for BTV News. Barely 72 hours after meeting its Texas state chairman, the National Working Committee of the People's Democratic Party 
has dissolved the state executive committees of 19 states plus the federal capital territory. In their place, the party has appointed caretaker committees to run their affairs at the world, local government and state levels in the affected states. This was contained in a statement signed by the party's National Publicity Secretary, Honorable Dave Bo Ologunagba in Abuja. He said the National Working Committee of the People's Democratic Party, pursuant to the provisions of Section 29 b of the Constitution of the Party on behalf of the National Executive Committee, approved the appointment of the executives whose tenure have expired in some states, local government, and what levels to serve as critical committees in the affected states. The critical committees have been mandated to run the affairs of the party at their appropriate levels for a period of three months. Their affected states are Abia, Akwaibon, Bauchi, Benue, Cross River, Delta, Ekiti, Enugu, Gombe, Imo, Jiga, Kaduna, Niger, Ondo, Plato, Rivers, Sakoto, Taraba, and the FCT. The National Working Committee for the stated that in situations where vacancies occurred in the respective escorts due to death, defection, or resignation, no replacement should be effected for such vacancies in the caretaker committees. It's also charged all leaders, critical stakeholders, and members of the party to continue to work together to ensure the stability, growth, and success of the party in their respective states, local government areas, and worlds. Every year, 1st of April is popularly known worldwide as April Fool's Day. It is a day where an individual can be pranked or become a victim of an, a practical joke which he may not be aware of. Meanwhile, the jokes or pranks are normally harmless but comical. Nigerians are not left out in observing April Fool's Day. BTV News crew were out to get people's reaction to April prank and their views about April first as April Fool's Days. BTV News Tosi Tolua Loju tells us more. April Fool's Day or All Fool's Day is an annual custom on 1st of April consisting of practical jokes and arses. Jokesters often expose their actions by shouting April Fool's at the recipient. Mass media can be involved with these pranks which may be revealed as such the following day. The custom of setting aside a day for playing armless pranks upon one's neighbor has been relatively common in the world historically. Although many theories have been proposed, the exact origin of April Fool's day is unknown. Some historians suggest that April Fool's originated because in the Middle Ages New Year's Day was celebrated on the 25th of March in most European towns with the holiday that in some areas of France specifically ended on 1st of April and those who celebrated New Year's Eve on 1st of January made fun of those who celebrated on other dates by the invention of the April Fool's Day. In modern times, in countries like the UK, an April Fool prank is sometimes later revealed by shouting April Fool at the recipient who becomes the April Fool. A former British colony, April Fool's Day is still widely known and pranks sometimes played on people. Meanwhile, BTV News correspondents who interacted with some Nigerians used the prank question on them, asking if they were aware of the federal government initiative to install artificial rain to curb the heat wave which respondents fell for. The respondents who were pranked also gave their own views about April Fool's Day as a day of fun or jokes. Yeah. So the federal government now, the information is just reaching us. They are planning to come up with an artificial rain. You know, and it's going to start from the north. So what do you think about that? <laughs> you caught me. Now cruise. April Fool Day now cruise. It's a day to to prank somebody to ease off the tension. Uh, Nigeria they hot. They pray for like rain the way they fall. We go make everywhere quiet, you understand? I just to just ease off the tension. It's a is especially April first. April first day. And that is how it is. An artificial rain like yeah, all right. artificial, artificial, made by man. Man, okay. Uh, I don't know, but I just I feel I feel that uh, if it's an artificial rain, then it's whether it's artificial or natural, as far as it is um, beneficial to the people, then we are good to go. <laughs> April Fool uh, actually is a, 
a way to uh, uh, get somebody's one no, to get uh, somebody's attention through something that uh, doesn't exist, and uh, that's a pray for. You have to start from by the from the north. Uh, to me, I don't. I don't think that is the best option for now, as, as the country is. So let him um, fund the, com the country, the states, head of men. Let them do so many things. There are so many things they can do to help the community. So I don't need <laughs> um, What I understand by April Fool is that uh, maybe try to debut somebody or tell somebody what is not necessary. You know it is not the right word. Writing, but the trust want to dupe the person or, or make him feel anxious or terrified. Uh, that is the word they prefer, by my own understanding. Artificial rain. I don't think that one will be possible. How can you cause artificial rain to fall from the sky? From the sky? April, <laughs> <laughs> one of those things. It, it's one of the fun inside the month of April. I think we were born and brought up and we met it that way. It was not really bad about it to me. It's, it's, it's the fall that involves the April, the month of April. April Fool is a special month to release tension. It's just a special month to create laughs and surprises, funny surprises. So the April month is a month in respect. January, February, March, April. I beg, relax. I want to shock you. Just your imagination, what you want to achieve. I want to use play, make you achieve one. After you don't have peace, you don't achieve an April fool. Go and fool yourself. So that's it. Though the custom of playing pranks on April Fool's Day ceases at noon, it is still a matter of prank or gets pranked anytime. So see to Lua Lojo reporting for BTV News. Were you pranked today? I wasn't. Moving on. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited has called for support in leveraging Nigerians' abundant gas resources for economic prosperity, emphasizing the need to bridge asset gaps in electricity and clean cooking fuel. The Group Chief Executive Officer of NNPCL, Mele Kiari, made this known after the 2024 edition of Society and Petroleum Engineers Olobiri Lecture Series and Energy Forum held in Abuja. BTV News, Oluwa Tony Oyedola, completes the report. A report in June last year by International Energy Agency and other partners has shown a global energy access gap as 675 million people live without electricity, while 2.3 billion rely on harmful cooking fuels. Nigeria is a country rich in gas resource, but yet to explore its full potentials. To bridge the energy access gap in Nigeria, Kayari said NMPC Limited is working on developing the right infrastructure to deliver oil and gas to to drive prosperity for Nigeria. Literally release over 2 billion scope immediately into our network and we'll be waiting for people to take gas uh, after that. And of course, at the back of this, the AKK project, as the general minister has, uh, has mentioned, you know, uh, we're, we're set to meet our deadlines. I do not want to give you numbers and dates, but I can tell you that uh, by the end of this year, if we haven't completed the line, it will be ready to receive gas. This year's edition of the Oli Beris Lecture Series and Energy Forum have in attendance industry players present to discuss the issues in the industry and how to move the industry forward. The theme of the forum is stability in the energy sector, integrated strategies for infrastructure, transportation, and security. Industry players suggest possible ways to addressing the challenges as it affects Nigeria. For infrastructure development, should take advantage of abundant fossil fuel to save against the future while considering transitioning into other renewable energy sources such as solar and wind to diversify our energy mix we share a common mission of developing the capacities of nigerian professionals creating a world-class workforce and harnessing the power of petroleum technology to fuel progress of the industry. Olibiri Lecture Series and Energy Forum is organized annually by the Society of Petroleum Engineers in Nigeria. It is geared towards enforcing the development of the oil and gas industry in Nigeria. Millicent Agagba reporting for BTV News.
actually that report of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited was taken by Millicent and not Uluwatoni. Now moving on, as Christians celebrate Easter, governors, senators and other prominent individuals have urged Nigerians not to lose hope in the face of the economic challenges in the country. In their various Easter messages, they express confidence that economic reforms being implemented by President Bola Tinebu would soon end hardship in the country. Let's now join Gift to Work Boy for more. In his Easter message, the Borno State Governor, Babagana Zulu, called on the Christian community in the state and Nigerian to pray for Tinibu to succeed in administering the affairs of Nigeria. Also, the Akwa Ibom State Governor, Umo Eno, urged Nigerians not to be discouraged by the economic downturn the nation was facing, but to be hopeful of a better tomorrow. This was contained in his Easter broadcast in Uyo on Sunday titled, He Arose That We May Arise. He said the nation may be going through a period of trial and tribulation, but as Christ overcame death with victory at his resurrection, Nigeria too will overcome the economic challenges with growth and abundance. On his part, the Ogun State Governor, Prince Dakpo Abiodun, urged Nigerians to be hopeful of a better tomorrow and to have faith in the country's current leadership. He said Nigerians should reflect on the significance of the holy season and strive to emulate the teaching of love, compassion, and selflessness demonstrated by Jesus Christ. In Lagos State, Governor Babajide Sanwolu called on residents to be Christ-like by reducing the cost of commodities as the Naira appreciates against the dollar. The Naira depreciated to 1,800 Naira per dollar in February. However, in recent weeks following some sweeping reforms by the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, the Naira launched an impressive rebound in March appreciating by 26% to 1,300 Naira per dollar. Advising Lagosians are the combined special prayer for Nigeria and President Bola Tinibu in commemoration of Easter and Ramadan celebrations in Ikeja. Samuel Olu said hardship would soon end. Also, the Delta State Governor, Sheriff Oborivo, urged Deltas and other Nigerians to show love to one another and be willing to make sacrifices for the nation's greater unity, peace, and progress. Oborivo, in his Easter message signed by his aide, Mr. Festus Asaba, on Sunday said, Christians must reflect on the importance of Easter celebrations in their dealings, not only with other Christians, but with people of other faiths and convictions. More so, the Ondo State Governor, Mr. Loki Ayedatiwa, called on the people of the state to use the period of the celebration of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ to show more love to one another. The Abia State Governor, Alex Oti, said in the quest to build an economical, vibrant state, the welfare of the citizens was uppermost in the mind of his administration and that no sacrifice was too big to improve the lives of the people. Oti, in his Easter message, on Sunday titled To Leave the Ideas of the Risen Christ said, whether it is in the rehabilitation and reconstruction of the long-abandoned road, reset of the healthcare delivery system, improved security of lives and property in various communities, or keep it to his promise of prompt and regular payment of salaries and pensions, his administration objectives is always clear to improve the lot of the average person who lives or does business in Abia. Likewise, the Edo State Governor, Mr. Godwin Obaseki, charged Christians not to lose hope amid the economic headwinds in the country. The governor in his sister message said he heartily felicitates with Christian faithful as they commemorate the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said the people may have been stretched beyond limits occasioned by the high cost of living and other economic headwinds, but they must not lose hope working together in unity. They can overcome these challenges and place the country on the path of sustainable growth and development. In the same vein, Governor Peter Mba of Enugu State also urged Nigerians to emulate the virtues of self-sacrifice and love as a Amplified by Christ. The Anambra State Governor, Professor Chukuma Soludo, urged Christians across the country to use the Easter period to foster unity, compassion, and goodwill in their various communities and the country at large. This was according to the statement issued by his aide. 
Christian Aburime. Also, the Nigerian Saldana Senators Forum called on Nigerian in the spirit of Easter to embrace the values of unity, compassion, sacrifice, and solidarity. The forum also commended the courage of Tinibu and the leadership of the National Assembly led by His Excellency Senator Goswi Akpabio for their efforts in the national development. The forum, in a goodwill message jointly signed by the forum's chair, Senator Adeto Kumbo Abiru, and the publicity, Asuko Ekpeyong, said, Easter is a time of reflection, renewal, and rejoicing. Gifts Uwagbo reporting for BTV News. And now to some community matters. Indigenous of a Womoma community in Ikwobaha, local government area of Edo State, have appealed to the state governor, Mr. Godwin Obaseki, the Oba of Benin, His Royal Majesty, AY II, and various security agencies in the state to come to the raid in rescuing the community from some individuals, including a police inspector, popularly and a popular social media activist who are allegedly fomenting trouble and crisis in the area, leading to toggery, unlawful arrest, maiming, violence, and destruction of property. BTV News Tosin Rider Oluwa Toyin Uyedola has details of the report. The indigents of Ewomoma community, located off Sapple Road in Ikobaoka local government's area of Edo State, once enjoyed peaceful ambience in the area until certain individuals who are allegedly land grabbers and non indigents came along a few years ago to interrupt the peace. When the community was visited by newsmen, it was alleged that a certain police inspector, also known by his nickname as Smolly, a social media activist and land grabber, and a certain Obodo have continued to terrorize the community, making threats, unlawful arrests, removing the authentic community youth leader, as well as causing insecurity in Ewomoma community. Speaking to newsmen, second eldest man in Ewomoma, Pa Gabriel Igwobaru, who narrated the ordeal in the community using local dialect, said that the said person stormed the community some time ago, leading a gun attack which made him to scamper for safety and broke his leg in the process. He also said that his own son was wrongly arrested arrested on false charges and was in prison. He added that those causing the crisis in the community are non-indigents and appeal to the government and the Benin monarch for intervention. <laughs> When also, in an interview, the first son of the Enogi of Ewomoma, Prince Etiosa Soye, stated that the crisis in the community has started for a few years now and alleged that some hoodlums were behind the interruption of the peace in the community which they once enjoyed. He mentioned that the true and authentic youth leader or Okaigele of Ewomoma community is Enogai campaign was unjustly removed by some individuals who are not even indigents of Ewomoma. He further alleged that those persons include the said police inspector, Smalley, who has threatened his life and even came with men who destroyed his car, set a car ablaze, fired gunshots at the Anogis Palace when he was celebrating the birth of his newborn baby. Though the matter has been reported to the Assistant Inspector General of Police and DSS with 2nd Mechanized Brigade, he appealed to State Governor Obav Binin and other security agencies to intervene and save a Womoma community from the unscrupulous individuals, including a social media activist. Smolly Sass. He came, he was assisting, he was he came and he was the vice, okay, let's say the assistant or Kaigele. He was always being arrogant. He was always acting as if he is your Kaigele. So one time some boys came here to disrupt, interrupt our meeting in our tower. Then Smolly started challenging Okayagele, which is a, a non he can pay. He said uh, he cannot be giving him this amount of money that he, if he doesn't start giving him one huge amount, something is going to happen. He started threatening us. 
before we know it, he came with all, some boys to invade the community. There were series of killings and series of allegations. They arrested a Noyi campaign. They accused him wrongly. Also, the committee women had Mrs. Rosemary Idubo Igobaho and other women said that Enogai is the recognized Okaigele, he is the authentic one, and no other, and that the government, the Oba of Benin, should help to bring peace to the community by interceding in freeing the community from these cohorts. Meanwhile, some complain of the destruction of their shops by thugs and appeal to security agencies for remedy. <laughs> Even a the indigents of Ewomoma hope for prompt intervention by the government and the Oba of Benin, Oba Ewai II, to restore the now elusive peace to this community. Oluwatoyin Oyedola reporting for BTV News. Sustained with community matters. Indigenous of Ogo community in Oriyama local government area of those states have come forward to refute the claims of Obagye Nunwame or Banahoro Iwebo. A Kigbain and Ubigun that they are autonomous communities under the Duke Jump of Ogo, saying that such claim is not only false but mysterious. mischievous. The report. Reacting to a public statement made by indigenous of Obage Nunwame, Obanahoro, Iwebo, Ekigbe, and Ubigu, representatives of Ogo community stated that they are not autonomous communities under the dukedom of Ogo, rather an appendages of Ogo community. Addressing their claims, Secretary, Council of Reps, Ogo community, Mr. Ekpomosa Osayomore, stated that the people of these appendage communities were granted access into the territory of Orogo by their forefathers to farm and cultivate on the land. Hence, they have no ancestral ties to the land of Orogo community. He further went on to address the erroneous assertions of Obagye Nunwame, Obanahoro, Iwebo, and others to be host communities of New Cross Petroleum Limited, calling on the management of New Cross Petroleum Limited and by extension Presco PSC to host these alleged communities from documents in relation to the establishment of OMEs in the community of Ogo, adding that they have no relevant documents as evidence to their independent ancestral ties to the land of Ogo. Obage Nunwame, Obanakuru, Ogo are all part of Orogo community, whereas Ubigu, Ekigbe, and Iwebu are camps in Oruwo community. We are not saying that they are not part of us. They are part of us. But everybody should know their nomenclature. So we want Presco PSE to come out and tell a do state government if they have the will with us, if they have the power to start creating communities inside an existing communities. They let them come up with the document with which that expanse of land was given to them. A member of Owo, an appendage community, Mr. Agbe Kanfai, they revealed that indeed the Afoset communities are under Owo, stressing that they should desist from laying claim to a territory which is not. Other members of Ogo community while expressing their detests on the actions of the appendage communities stated that Ogo is a peace-loving community and would exchange and only branch members of these appendages as they dominate a common territory and urge the people of Obagye Nunwame, 
Iwebo, Ugbigun, and others to desist from proclaiming themselves as autonomous communities. The people of Owo is not part of those people that is constituting nuisance inside Orowo community. Owo, the people of Owo, the people of Obana Horo, the people of uh, Obaginunwame, we are quarters in Orowo community. Uh, Ugbigun and uh, Ekigbe, Iwebo, they are camps in Orowo community. We are letting the old general public know that those people, they are from Ugeli, from Delta State. Some are from Ugeli, while some are from Saple. Omo Efe Ejeta is an Urobo name, including uh, Joseph Ukweku. They are from Urobos, which migrated to Urobo to come and farm. But surprisingly, they are not claiming ownership. How can you create community inside already an existing community? I want to use this opportunity to call a uh, state government to call Presto to order to, to, the right, to do the right thing. Orogo is a peaceful community. We don't need crisis in our community. Uh, Mr. Napoleon, who is from Ombage, should be called to order because he is joining the, the settlers to fight the Oba of Benin because he's not only fighting Orogo. This same thing repeats itself before. They did it in the past, which led to the suspension. And with the, the love we have, we joined them to see how we found solution to that problem, which today we are all living uh, in peace. So it should be called to order not to join the settlers to cede a dope land to Delta State. They noted that they would take their case to relevant authorities if appropriate actions are not taken to address their issue. Best orator reporting for BTV News. The River State House of Assembly has said it will not hesitate to impeach the state governor, Simin Alayu Fubara, if he becomes the last resort to uphold the Constitution. Speaker of the House, Honorable Martins, who stated this at a media briefing in Port Harcourt, the state's capital, was flanked by 26 of his colleagues. BTV News, Gift to Work Boy, has details. Recall that the 27 lawmakers said to be loyal to the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Yesom Wike, have been at loggerheads with Fubara since October last year. This was secret to the feud between Wike and his estranged political godson and successor, Fubara, who the former considers disloyal. The Amewu led assembly had attempted to impeach the governor in the heat of the political crisis in the state before President Bola Tinibu intervened, defeating parties to Abuja, which gave birth to an eight-point resolution. Continuing, Ame Wood accused Fubara of refusing to abide by the Abuja Peace Agreement, pointing out that the governor has continued to act outside the law, including running the state without an approved budget. The speaker said the duties of the assembly is recognized by the law and holds the mandate of its constituents to carry out its responsibilities. They prefer to hold talk shows, organize rallies, hold press conferences, and announce that the House commenced the impeachment proceedings against the governor for no just cause. But we'll fail to ask the governor if he has not been informed of the particulars of gross misconduct. They are not asking him, leveled against him, or at least read them when they were filed in court in response to his petition. The governor had gone to court to say he didn't do anything. They must not forget that the Riverside Assembly has the mandate of the people and that we swore an oath of allegiance to the Constitution to do the needful, including the impeachment of the governor, as a last resort. So if it becomes a last resort in accordance with the law, we will not hesitate to do so because no individual is bigger than River State, including the governor. He also took a swipe at the former River State People's Democratic Party Presidential Campaign Council, led by former Minister of Transportation, Dr. Abiy Sekibo, for casting aspersion on the FCT minister in a bit of painting black before Tinibu. They said in their statement that they now support the Renewed Hope Agenda. And we are not against it. Certainly not. We are calling on Nigerians to support Mr. President. So we are not against anybody. See, but the issue is, can they be trusted going by their past actions? Is it not a ploy to deceive the president, gain rewards and milestones as usual, and let her fight back? Because they discredited the FCT minister because he's no more governor. Now they want something from president. They want something from the governor. Mm -hmm. They are not subscribing. I use the word subscribe because that's the word they used. They're not subscribing to the governor and the president. 
probably when they get what they want, they do what they know how to do best. It's unfortunate. These new arrivals just landed like hawks. They now want to grab what they spat on, but need to be careful of their rantings and utterances against the institution of the legislature. Nigerians are waiting to see the end to the crisis working river states. Gifts were reporting for BTV News. EDS Quality Paints, Kilometer 12, Benin Supply Road by Ogege Quarters, Benin City, or our branch office, 68 Supply Road, opposite former Edo State Library, now ShopRite. Contact us today on 090-5320-6873. EDS Quality Paints, keeping your goals live. Thank you so very much for staying with us. And now to the foreign scene. A suspected Israeli strike has destroyed the Iranian consulate building in Syria's capital, Damascus, Syrian state media reports. Photos show smoke and dust rising from the flattened multi-story structure in the west of the city. The Israeli military says it does not comment on foreign media reports. For details of this and more, let's not join Rebecca Goffey. Israel's military completed a two-week raid on Gaza's Al-Shifa hospital, leaving much of the complex destroyed. The Israel Defense Forces IDF stated they targeted the hospital because Hamas had regrouped there. The raid involved intense fighting and airstrikes, which, ne which nearby buildings also damaged. The IDF claimed to have killed and detained terrorists and discovered weapons within the hospital. Gaza's Hamas-run health ministry reported leaving behind numerous bodies, and local sources noted widespread destruction in the area. Despite the IDF's assertion of precision, photos revealed intensive damage to critical hospital departments. Gaza's Hamas-run civil defense service confirmed the destruction of all hospital facilities and infrastructure. 13 gold miners trapped in a landslide in Russia's Far East are presumed dead after a rescue operation ended without sources. The Pioneer Mine in the Amur region saw efforts halted due to the risk of further rock collapses. The miners trapped underground for over two weeks were unable to be reached as potential shelter areas were flooded. The mine, a major operation, is under scrutiny for possible safety violations leading to the arrest of the facility's managing director. Rescuers concluded their efforts after cameras indicated flooded conditions in potential in potential hiding spots for the trapped miners. After almost nine months of searching, the remains of a two and a half year old Emile Solier, who disappeared in the French Alps, have been discovered by a hiker. The area where his remains were found had been extensively searched before. Now, investigators must determine whether Emile's death was accidental or the result of a crime. Emile's disappearance last July shocked France, and the discovery of his remains has saddened the community deeply. He vanished from his grandparents' holiday home in a small Alpine village, triggering a massive search effort involving hundreds of people and sniper dogs. Despite the national attention and criminal inquiry, the circumstances surrounding Emil's disappearance remain unclear. His parents, wife sharing the worst, had hoped for his safe return and made a public appeal for information. Now the investigation continues to uncover the truth behind Emil's tragic fate. Thank you, Rebecca. And now to entertainment. Is comedian and filmmaker Ayo Maku, popularly known as AY, 
has said his problem started after he declared his support for the Labour Party presidential candidate in the last election, Mr. Peter Ruby. He said despite his troubles, he didn't regret supporting Ruby. Ay spoke at the Easter edition of his comedy show, Ay Live, in Lagos on Sunday. For details of this and other reports from the entertainment world, let's not join Give to Our Board. Mark Jr. was crowned the champion during a two-hour difficult finale, winning by precisely 0.07%, making the season the wildest season yet. Mark Jr. got 34.50% of the viewers' votes against his closest rival, Makeke, 34.43%, Z, 14.04%, Sinaye, 7.86%, Mpumi, 5.81%, and Papa Goes, 3.36%. This season's biggest started with a total of 20 three lively characters under one roof. People's favorite, Papa Ghost, despite being the front runner at the early stages, was the first to be evicted from the house. The Big Brother, Zazi, is a South African version of the international television series, Big Brother. Daniel Rega, a controversial influencer, has sparked outrage with his criticism of emerging Nigerian singer Aria Star's dress taste. Rega claimed on a podcast hosted by Big Brother Ninja Star doing that Aria Star is most known for her fashion sense rather than her musical abilities. Daniel Rega particularly stated that Aria Star's one yard miniskirt has received more notice and popularity among fans than her songs. He added that when netizens see a woman wearing a miniskirt, they frequently make similarities. Told one notably worn by Aria Star. Shinarambo, the cousin of popular Nigerian singer Davido, has ignited a frenzy online after reportedly splurging millions of naira on bespoke luxury chain. The extravagant acquisition was brought to light by Karakt Luxury, a reputable jewelry and watches designer who proudly unveiled the stunning creation. According to reports, the chain has swiftly gained recognition as one of the premier designs in the realm of hip hop jewelry for the current year. 23-year-old Nigerian singer Divine Ikubo, popularly known as Rema, has warmed out of his teachers and fans alike during his recent visit to his former school in Edo State. It would be recalled that the Calm Down hitmaker made a grand first-time visit to his hometown, Benin City, Edo State, six years after he left the ancient town for greener pastures. He, however, made a brief detour to his former school where he had his secondary school education and met with some of his old teachers there. And that's it on Entertainment News Tonight. Give Wagbo reporting for BTV News. Thank you, Gift. And now to sports. Manchester City star Erling Hartland remains optimistic about his team's chances in the Premier League despite the recent goalless draw against Arsenal. The match held at the Etihad Stadium saw both teams miss an opportunity to gain ground in the title race with Liverpool now leading the pack by two points over Arsenal and three over City following their victory against Brighton. BTV News' Millicent Agagba has the taste of this amount. Haaland, reflecting on City's ability to mount comebacks, expressed confidence on Instagram, stating they have done it once and can do it again. Although hailed as one of the premier strikers in the world, Haaland's performance against Arsenal's defence, led by William Shaliba and Gabriel Magahez, fell short with zero shots on target. This sober showing even led football pundit Roy Kane to liken his performance to that of a League Two striker. As a result of the draw, Manchester City finds themselves in third place, trailing Liverpool. Liverpool by three points, with the Merseyside club also holding a superior goal difference, making them the favourite to clinch the Premier League title this season. With the Premier League season nearing its climax, attention is on the remaining fixtures that will determine the title race. Liverpool leads the table, closely pursued by Aston Villa, while Chelsea holds an advantage with two games in hand. Recent results saw Liverpool seize the two spots with a win over Brighton, while Manchester City draw with Arsenal added to the suspense. As the season approaches its conclusion, every match becomes pivotal in shaping the destiny of the title race. The 2023-2024 Premier League season is set to accumulate on May 19, 2024 with Liverpool, Manchester City and Chelsea all eyeing the trophy. With fixture details unveiled and anticipation building, the race for the title continues to captivate football fans worldwide.
The Super Falcons camp opened ahead of a crucial clash with South Africa for the sport at the 2024 Olympics. Captain Rashidat Ajibade leads the early arrivals while the team aims to overcome past challenges against Bayana Bayana with a strong lineup including goalkeeper Chiamaka and experienced midfielders. Nigeria is determined to secure victory in a two-legged affair. The Falcons' determination is fueled by their desire to avenge past defeats and secure their place in the Olympic event. With players like Oshua expected to join the camp soon. The team's confidence is high. The upcoming qualifiers against South Africa promise to be intense, with both teams fighting for a spot in Paris. Nigeria's blend of experience and emerging talent give them a formidable edge on the showdown. As preparations intensify, the Super Falcons are focused on delivering a commanding performance on the pitch. With the support of their fans behind them, they aim to soar to victory and book their tickets to the Olympics. And that's it on Sport News tonight. Millicent Agagba reporting for BTV News. Thank you so much, Millicent. And with our sports report, we call it a wrap on our news tonight. Thank you so very much for spending part of the evening with us. And we do hope you keep a date with us again tomorrow, Jehovah's Willing. My name is Best Orito. And from all of us, it's good night.